Number two, the right market niche. If you want to succeed in business, you need to choose the right market and the right niche. So what is a market niche? To explain that, I need to explain first what a market is. So a market is a group of people who make purchases. For example, the female market consists of females who make purchases, females who buy things. The male market consists of men who also buy things, right? So generally, these are the two broad markets available anywhere in the world, the female market and the male market. Now, a niche is a segment or a subgroup of people within a market. So for example, let's say your brilliant idea for your business is to manufacture and sell baby food. Who should you sell baby food to? The male market or the female market? Who do you think is the best market to sell your baby food to? If you choose the female market, you are correct. It's women who care about baby food. But does that mean you should start selling and marketing your baby food to any woman you see? Absolutely not. And here's why. Not all women care about baby food. Let me repeat that again. Not all women care about baby food. Because you see, some women are unmarried. They have no kids. And they may not care about having any kids at all. Right? Some of them are married, but they don't care about baby food because all their children are grown up, so they don't need them. And some of them are married, but they also don't care about baby food because they don't have any children yet. The only women who care about baby food are married women who have children who are below, say, two years old. You see how better it is now? Now, instead of trying to convince all of the women in the country that your baby food is the best thing since SMA infant formula milk, you can concentrate on only finding mothers whose children are two years old and below and talk only to them. This means that your marketing will be cheaper, you will save yourself a lot of time, and you will get to sell more of your products because now you are talking to people who want what you have. So the lesson for you here is this. Whatever your idea is, it must cater to a segment of a larger market. If you don't know which group of people within your target market you are selling your product to, then you will fail. If you do not have or you are not in the right business niche, it is impossible for you or your business to make any money and succeed. This is because most people don't want to buy most things that they are being sold, right? You want to make sure that, the, that your business is set up to sell something that people already want to buy. But how do you know how to identify niches within a broad market. How do you do that? There are three questions you need to ask before you decide to enter and sell to a particular market niche. And here they are. So the first question you need to ask is, are there people in my target niche market who are motivated by pain and urgency or irrational passion. If they are not, if they are already already motivated, then it's probably not a good niche to pursue. I have an irrational passion for video games, and I buy every single type that is put out, even though I don't have time to play. Right, but I buy them. I am a perfect target for video game businesses and sellers. The second question is, 
you have to ask is this, right? Is my target prospect or customer proactively looking for a solution? Why do we need them to be proactively looking for a solution? Because we will need to convince them to want to buy what we are selling. And this, my friend, this is tough. You know, it's not the kind of thing you want to do. Right? It's not the sort of thing successful businesses do. Does Aliko Dangote need to convince people to buy cement? Of course not. He doesn't. He doesn't need to convince you to buy cement. If you want to build a house, you definitely need cement. All he simply needs to do, and he, which he does, is to advertise his cement to people who are already looking for cement. And then they go to him and buy. The key here is you need to look for customers who are looking for you. Don't look for customers who will, that you will talk into buying what you are selling. Now, to the third and most important question, does my target market have few or no perceived options? If your target customer has lots of options, then you are playing the competition game. You are competing on price. You will be caught saying, oh, my thing is cheaper Come than theirs. And trust me, that is not a good thing. You do not ever want to compete on pricing for your business. No business, especially not a new one, can win a prize war. You don't want to be one of the 50 options that your customer can go with. You want to be only one of the few options available. This will enable you, you know, clearly define your uniqueness, your product, your, your value proposition, and why you should be chosen. And then you can justify charging a high price. Higher prices mean that you get to make more money. I mean, think about DSTV. They are a perfect example. So you are looking for a niche that has customers who are motivated by pain and urgency or irrational passion, who are proactively looking for a solution and who have few or no perceived options. This is what I do with every new business that I start or that I plan to start. So you have an idea and you have answered these three questions about your niche. And for each question, it's a yes. So here's a simple method to test the idea in the real world before you ever spend a lot of your money to make the product. Talk to people in that niche. Go out and talk to people and interact with them live. They will tell you everything you need to know about that niche market. Some easy ways to find people in niche markets is to use the internet. Go to chat rooms, go to Facebook groups, online forums like Nairland and Co. And tell people, hey, can I ask you a few questions about dash, 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 you know? Add the need or the topic. I would like to get on the phone and talk with you or chat with you about what you need because I think I can help you solve your problem. You can then interview this person one on one. You can do it via Skype or you can talk to them on the phone or you can talk to them face to face. Right? Via chat. Ask them what they want. Ask them what their biggest problems and frustrations are. Ask them what their biggest wants and aspirations are. Ask them what they are doing to solve their problems. Ask them what they have tried in the past that they didn't work. Ask them what they think the solution is. Ask them what they want their outcome to look like. You know, talk to five to 10 people per day for about a week. Get inside their head and figure out what they have going on. You will be shocked at how much you will learn. You will know 
if they are motivated by pain and urgency or irrational passion, you will know if they are proactively looking for a solution and you will know if they are you know, you know if they have few or no perceived options available to them. Then com compare everything with what you are planning to put out in the marketplace. If what you learn doesn't match what you have, you can then either make it match it, and if you can't, throw the idea away and then start up with a new one. All right. That's what you need to do. Now, let's move on to the third step.